Should we tell people to trust the science? You can see why this would be a really appealing idea. Science has brought us incredible innovations, everything from the computers that we use to the healthcare technology we all benefit from. And science has vastly improved humans' understanding of the world. But science, as this incredibly powerful tool, is different than science as an institution that's a particular group of people doing a particular group of activities at a single point in time. There's a lot of evidence that science as an institution doesn't always function as it should. One of the clearest examples of this comes from social priming in the field of psychology. The field of social priming had hundreds of studies showing that subtle cues could meaningfully alter human behavior. For instance, that holding a warm mug could get you to behave more warmly, or that reading words related to old age could get you to walk more slowly. All of this operating at a subconscious level. While these sorts of studies make great TED Talks, the problem is, when scientists finally got around to trying to replicate other people's work in the field, they found that most of them could not be replicated. In other words, if they would redo the same exact study, they would not get the same result. And this helped precipitate what's now known as the replication crisis. Imagine, with regard to social priming, someone saying, just trust the science. We know that work doesn't replicate. It would be ridiculous to trust it just because it's part of science. The problem is that science has pockets of research that don't replicate or that don't do what they claim. But if the scientific method is such an incredible tool, why is it that science is sometimes not trustworthy? Well, sometimes it's just simply fraud, people making up or manipulating their data. Thankfully, this isn't that common, but it's still much more common than it should be. A recent famous example is that Harvard Business School professor Francesca Gino was accused of committing fraud, and now a very large number of her papers have been called into question. But a much more common problem than fraud is what's known as p-hacking. This is where researchers use fishy statistics to get a result that seems positive when in fact there's no signal at all there. Suppose, for instance, you're a researcher studying the health benefits of turmeric. You give people turmeric and collect 10 different measures of their health, such as their stress levels, their cholesterol levels, and their body mass index. Suppose, though, you find only one of these health metrics improves and the other nine don't. What you really should do is report all 10 results, even though nine of them were null findings. But researchers who are p-hacking will report just the one that made turmeric look good, making it seem much more likely to be beneficial than it really is. A third really important problem in science that doesn't get discussed very often is what we call importance hacking. This is when researchers get their research through peer review by exaggerating the benefits of it or the value of it, when in fact it has little to no value. For example, researchers developed a new intervention to help improve students' grades. This was published in a top journal. Unfortunately, if you look at the fine print, you realize it only improved their grades by 1.2 points on a 100-point scale, calling into question whether this intervention is even worth implementing at all. So sometimes research will seem valuable until you look at the details and you realize that it isn't really what it seems. A fourth problem that can arise in science is that it can be biased. This occurs when it's easier to publish a paper saying something's true than saying that thing is false. Take, for instance, the broken windows theory of policing, which says that in order to police effectively and reduce crime, you want to make sure to enforce low-level crimes, things like jumping the turnstile to get into the subway, not just the actual serious crimes. In the 1990s, this theory was fairly popular, and so it may have been easier to publish a paper about it then. Now, people tend to be very skeptical of the theory, so it might be much harder to publish a paper in a top journal saying that broken windows policing is actually an effective method. The fact is that scientists are people, and at certain times, certain ideas will be more popular than others. As we've seen, there are a number of problems that can occur in science. And while science itself is one of the most powerful tools we've ever invented, and it's taught us so much about the way the world and the universe works, it doesn't mean that all science is reliable. Dismissing all science and dismissing all scientists would be an incredible mistake, but that doesn't mean that you can go all the way the other direction and simply say, trust the science or trust scientists. If you tell people to just trust the science, the problem is sometimes you'll be telling them to trust junk. It would be great if we lived in a world where all science is reliable, but it's simply not. We have to have nuance. We have to understand that some science is trustworthy and some isn't. That's simply the world that we live in. You can learn a lot more about the replication crisis in science on our website at clearerthinking.org.